Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 120. Shizun goes into seclusion. The first rays of dawn broke and a red glow filled the sky. Although it was still early in the morning, a large number of disciples had already gathered outside the Red Lotus Pavilion. They were all wearing white cloaks and their heads were lowered as they stood on both sides of the road. Dong. 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 The sound of the morning bell is heard from sky reaching pagoda. In the distance some men are slowly approaching with a coffin. At the head of the group is Xue Zhenyong, sect leader of Shi Sheng Peak, followed by Mo Ran and Xue Meng. To the left and right stood Shi Mei and a monk wearing old robes. They walk on the slippery stone path, gradually coming through the mist. The monk is carrying a lantern. Although it is already dawn, the brightness of the lantern was not diminished in the daytime. The golden light was like a summer flower, dazzling and resplendent. All the disciples bowed their heads in succession, concentrating on their breath. They had already heard that Grand Master Hui Zhui of Wuibei Temple had specially made a trip here for the sake of the elder Yu Heng, so they assumed that this unassuming monk should be him. Although the disciples are curious about this legendary figure, none of them dared to take a closer look out of reverence. On the long mountain path, they could only to hear the sound of a man's staff and see a pair of monk's shoes made of hemp straw passing by in their dangling vision. Just like that, the master left leaving everyone standing in silence. The coffin was carried steadily all the way. Since it was a resurrection and not a burial, no one wept. When they reached the Red Lotus Pavilion, Hui Zhui looked around and said, just leave it by the Lotus Pond. That area is abundant with spiritual energy, making the spell can be easily performed. Xue Zhenyang led the rest of the group and set the coffin down there, Master, if there is anything else you need, just ask. If you save Yu Heng, you would have saved half of my life. I definitely do my best to help. Thank you for your kindness, Master Shui, Hui Zhui said. This humble monk has nothing to ask at the moment, but if he has something in the future, it will not be too late to tell the sect leader. Please Master, no need to be too courteous. Hui Zhui put his hands together, smiled slightly, and gave a salute to Xue Zhenyong, then turned to look at the others and said, This humble one is not very talented that it will take five years to revive Elder Chu's soul back. To avoid any disturbances, the Red Lotus Pavilion will be closed to visitors from now on, and will not be reopened until the day Elder Chu returns to life five years later. Although Xue Meng had heard about this before, he could not help but feel teary-eyed when Master Hui Zhui confirmed once again that it would take five years before Shizun would awaken. He silently lowered his head. If you all have something to say to Elder Chu, please go ahead and go to the coffin. After today, it will be more than a thousand days before you could meet again. The people then went in turn. First were Xue Zhenyang and the rest of the elders, who stood one by one in front of the coffin to bid their farewells. Xue Zhenyang said, May we meet again soon. Elder Tanlang said, Wake up early. Elder Xianji said, May everything go smoothly. Elder Lu Kun sighed and said, I envy you a little, five years of frozen age makes you look less old. The rest of the elders also had something to say, in one way or another, and soon it was Xue Meng's turn. Xue Meng had wanted to hold back, but he was so used to doing things in a spirited way so he couldn't endure it anymore and finally shed another tear at Chu Wanning's coffin. While forcefully wiping his tears, he choked out, Shizun, I will train well even in your absence and I will definitely not disgrace you at the Lingshan Mountain Tournament. When you wake up, I will tell you all about my good ranking. Under my Shizun, there are no disciples who say they are defeated. Xue Zhenyang walked over to him and patted him on the shoulder. Xue Meng did not embrace his father as usual, but turned away stubbornly with a sniffle. He no longer wanted to be a spoiled young master who relied only on his father in front of his Shi Zun. When it came to Shi Mei, his eyes were also wet. He didn't say anything. 
he only lowered his head to look at Chu Wanning for a while and then silently retreated to the side. After he left, a pale pink Haitang blossom was gently placed in the coffin. The hand holding the flower was still somewhat juvenile in form, but it was also very long and slender. Mo Ran stood by the edge of the coffin. The wind blew gently across the lake, sending the sweet fragrance of lotus flowers. His hair was a little tousled around his forehead, but he raised his hand to tidy up Chu Wanning's face. Mo Ran pursed his lips, as if he had a lot to say, but in the end, he just said, a little hoarsely and softly, I'll wait for you. Wait for what? He couldn't say it. He felt like he ought to be saying when you wake up but it didn't feel like it was enough. It was as if he couldn't articulate the feelings that filled and crowded his heart. It was as if there was hot lava gathering in the bottom of his heart, and those lava, unable to find a precise outlet, rampaged through the cavity of his heart and rushed around his mind, causing him to feel panic and pain. He felt that one day his heart would be broken and then the lava would run uncontrollably, and he would be melted to ashes in the tumbling waves of that fury. But today, he was not sure what that burning feeling really was. So could only said, I'll wait for you. Then the Red Lotus Pavilion was closed. A huge barrier descended as if it were a gate dividing life and death, isolating everyone outside. From then on for the next five years, no one would be able enjoy the fragrance of the lotus during summer and the tranquility of winter snow in the water pavilion. The bamboo leaves were desolate and the Haitang blossoms fell, extending from the red lotus pavilion all the way to the entrance of the mountain. All of the disciples kneeled down, while Mo Ran, Shue Meng, and she may knelt down at the very front of the endless river. Shui Zhenjiang's voice vibrates through the trees and clouds as he said, We hereby send Elder Yu Hong to his seclusion. The disciples hung their heads and spoke quietly, We wish Elder Yu Han the best in his seclusion. The voices of thousands of people converged into a stream, and suddenly exploded on the top of Shi Sheng Peak that was shrouded in mist. The crow's cries rang out in all directions, circling the treetops but not daring to cling to them. The rumbling of the voices was like muffled thunder, crushing through the rolling clouds and straight to the sky. This disciple respectfully sent Shizun to his retreat. Mo Ran said softly. The long hammer hit downwards. Five years. After Yu Han went into seclusion, the three personal disciples of Elder Yu Han were not willing to be temporarily under the tutelage of other elders. Due to their aptitude and mental cultivation method, Shi Mei and Shui Meng stayed on the mountain while Mo Ran chose to travel. However, he made this choice not only because he was suitable for the experiential learning, but also because there were many things that were different from his last life. Not to mention the changes in Chu Wanning's part, he was most worried about the matter of false cushion. He had a faint suspicion that the person who had been hiding behind the scenes might also be reborn person. After all, this person's grasp of Zhenlong chess formation could already be said to be 80 to 90 percent. In his previous life, even until his suicide, there was no other person in the world who could perform this forbidden art to such an extent. Investigating the identity of this person is not his main goal. After Kaidi Town, the entire cultivation world had their attention focused, waiting for the old gourd in the dark to reveal his fox tail so he did not need to interfere too much in this matter. Mo Ran knew that he was not very smart. He only has abundant spirit. Energy and his talent in cultivation was astonishing. Since there was bound to be another battle in the future, what he could do was to restore his strength to the level it was before his death in the previous life. In the previous life he was the destroyer. In this life, he is going to be a protector. Not long after Chu Wanning went into seclusion, Mo Ran stood in front of the mountain gate of Shi Sheng Peak. He carried his luggage and intended to set out on a long journey. There weren't many people who came to see him off Shui Zhenyong. Madame Wang and Shi Mei. Shui Zhenyong patted his shoulder and embarrassedly said, Meng Er didn't come. He said. He said that he wanted to practice his saber in the forest. He didn't have. 
the time to send me away. Xue Zhenyang became even more embarrassed and couldn't help. But scold, that little rascal is so stupid. Mo Ran laughed, he wholeheartedly wants to take the lead in the Lingshan Mountain Conference, so it's only right for him to be more diligent in his training. It will be up to him to give Shi Zun face. Xue Zhenyang hesitated for a moment and looked at Mo Ran then said, the Lingshan Mountain Conference is the pinnacle of martial arts meetings in the cultivation world. Although Ran Air's trip to the four corners of the world will give him great strength, I am afraid that the assembly will not recognize those mixed techniques. It would be a pity if we missed it. Mo Ran said, there's my cousin. Don't you want to get a rank? This time, Mo Ran was truly smiling. Ranking. In his previous life at the Lingshan Mountain competition, he had done something wrong and was sentenced to confinement. He had held a grudge in his heart about it. But now, it seemed like this matter is so trivial. He was a man who had many life and death experiences. In the torrent of disaster, he went from unwillingness to desire, from longing to resentment, from resentment to relief, and from relief to guilt. Nowadays, what Mo Ran wanted was no longer beauties and wine and the worship of the world, let alone revenge and the thrill of killing. He had already seen it and was tired of it. He didn't want to go back. He only felt that it was very cold there and that no one was with him. He was taxi in June. He had once commanded the wind and rain at the summit of Mount Tai, and he had seen all the flowers in the world. Why? Would he care about the applause on the Lingshan Mountain? As for his ranking, whoever wants to line up can go right ahead. I still want to do something else. Mo Ran laughed, Xue Meng is a young master after all and a young master has his own way of living. I am a ruffian and a ruffian had his own ways of life. Madam Wan could not help but pity him and said, Silly child, what are you talking about? You and Xue Meng are the same, there is no difference between this young master and this ruffian. Mo Ran chuckled but there was a hint of bitterness in his tone. He was born with low status but had the great fortune of being brought to Shi Sheng Peak. However, he spent the previous ten years in a muddle. How could it be the same? But seeing Madame Wang's gentle and concerned expression, it was naturally not good to say anything. So, he just nodded his head and replied, Auntie is right. It was me who did not speak well. Madame Wang smiled and shook her head. She gave him a small pouch with a flower on it and said, You'll be away on a trip and have no one to look after you. Take this pouch, it contains a lot of medicine for injuries, all made by your auntie and better than those bought in ordinary shops, so keep it carefully and don't drop it. Mo Ran was very grateful, Thank you, auntie. She may said, I don't have anything for you but just this jade pendant. If you can wear it, it will warm your spirit core. Mo Ran took the pendant and saw that the white jade was as white as cream and warm to the touch. He put the jade pendant back into Shi Mei's hand and said, I can't take this, it's too valuable. Besides, my spirit core is fire based, so I'm afraid it might cause me to chi deviate. Shi Mei laughed. What nonsense are you talking about? Why would it cause you to chi deviate? I won't accept it anyway. Your body is weak, so it would be better if you could have it yourself. But I even had someone get this for you from the Xian Yuan Pavilion. When Mo Ran heard him say this, he felt very warm, but more importantly, he felt his heartache, the Xian Yuan Pavilion's items are all astronomically expensive. This jade pendant really doesn't have much use to me, but it is extremely good for you. She may, I accept your kind intentions, but you should keep this item for yourself. You should always wear it to recuperate your spirit energy. She may wanted to continue speaking, but Mo Ran had already wrapped the thin cord around the jade pendant and attached it to his lapel for him. It's quite nice. He chuckled, lifting his hand and patting Shi Mei's shoulder, it fits you much better than it does me. 
I'm such a rough guy, I'm afraid I'll knock something against it in a couple of days. Aran is right, although this jade pendant can be worn by everyone, it is most comfortable for those with water spirit cores. Keep it for yourself, me air. Since Madame Wang had already spoken, she may naturally listen to her, nodded, and said to Mo Ran, then take care of yourself. Don't worry, I'll write to you often. His departure was imminent and she may felt a little sad. However, when he heard him say this, he couldn't help but laugh, only she Zun can understand the words you write. At the mention of Chu Wanning, Mo Ran did not know what to think or feel. The bone-chilling hatred dissipated but the guilt remained. As if the scars were scabbing over and the whole heart was aching and itching. It was with this feeling that he went down the mountain, alone. One, two, three. He kept his head down and counted silently in his mind as he walked. One hundred and one, one hundred and two, one hundred and three. As he reached the foot of the mountain, he couldn't help but turn back and look out towards the cloudy summit of Shisheng Peak, with its stretches of stone steps that were nearly impossible to see, and he muttered, 3,799. He walked along and counted down the whole way. This is the number of steps leading up to the gate, the number of steps Chu Wanning climbed with him on his back that day. He felt that he would never forget Chu Wanning's cold, bloody, and damaged hands for the rest of his life. It is often not in man's nature to be good or to do evil. Everyone is like a field. Some people are lucky enough to have rice and wheat saplings scattered on its ground. In autumn, when the grains are plentiful, everything is good and praiseworthy. But there are other fields that are not so fortunate. The seeds of poppies are planted between the soil, and when the spring winds blow, they give birth to the sin of bliss, and the sky is covered with golden red, dirty blood. People hated it, cursed it, feared it, and were drunk in its stench, rotten to death. In the end, the righteous and benevolent would gather and throw a fire into the field and as that person twisted and tried to rise from the charred smoke, they would call him a hotbed of karma, a harsh demon, a devil who eats people without spitting out their bones, a man who deserves to die and has no conscience. He twitched and moaned in agony in the fire as the poppies quickly curled up and turned into charred, stinking mud. But he was once a good field, too, who longed for rain and sunshine. But when the first seeds of darkness were cast, then the sin became an uncontrollable plague. This field which was once gentle and splendid, was lit on fire and became ash and then abandoned. No one wanted him any more once a person became an old abandoned piece of land. Thus, he had never thought that someone would come to his life and give him another chance. Someone who turned over the soil and plowed the earth, giving him a chance to start all over again. Chu Wanning. He would not be able to see him for the next five years. Today was the first day of that long five years. He suddenly realized that he was missing Chu Wanning's face which was stern, angry, gentle, solemn and upright. Mo Ran slowly closed his eyes. He carefully recalled his previous life and how much of it had been scattered by the wind and snow. He gradually realized that the matter of the heavenly rift was the biggest calamity of his life. In a previous life, he loved someone deeply. Then the man died and he went to the netherworld. In this life, there is another person who loves and cares for him. Later, that person sacrificed his life and brought him back to the human world. End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shi Zun Chapter 121 Shi Zun is the real Grand Master. On the eighth day after Mo Ran's departure, Xue Zhenyang received his first letter. The handwriting was crooked despite of the lines on the paper which showed an obvious effort to straighten it, but it was to no avail. I hope this letter finds Uncle well. I'm here today at Blossom Crossing and everything is fine. There was an evil spirit here a few days ago, but fortunately there were no casualties. I have already taken care of the water ghouls that caused the trouble, 
and now the fairies are able to come and go safely. I have received 500 silver in notes from the boat captains and enclosed them with the letter. Please send my auntie and my she's on my regards. On the 120th day, the 22nd letter. I hope this letter finds uncle well. By chance, I recently come across a high quality spirit stone that can be embedded into Xuemeng's long chen which could make it a weapon with unparalleled power. It's not quite the same as a godly weapon but it's still very rare. Please send my regards to my aunt and my Shizun. On the 130th day, the 24th letter. I hope this letter finds uncle well. Lately, I have been training in the snow valley. It is always cold here even in the middle of the day and there are many exotic flora. The Shuanghua snow lotus was the rarest of them all. But unfortunately, there was a thousand-year-old ape demons guarding the field of flowers. When your nephew first arrived, my spiritual power was low and my martial ability was not good enough to make it past them. However, I have improved so much these days that I was able to break through their defenses and pick a dozen of flowers, which I will send back with this letter. Please send my regards to my aunt and my Shizun. The letters were often accompanied by a number of objects of interest, medicinal herbs, and spiritual stones. Apart from writing to Shui Zhenyong, Mo Ran would also write to Shi Mei privately. The letter was primarily about the places he had been and the things he had seen, then reminding him to dress warmly and other such trivial matters. In the beginning, the writing was really messy with the characters all over the place. But gradually the writing started to became straighter. Although the characters did not exactly look very good but the letter's structure started to become more mature and contained fewer and fewer mistakes. A year has passed since then. On this day, Xue Zhenyang was drinking fresh spring tea when he received another letter from Mo Ran. He finished reading it with a smile and handed it to Madame Wang, who looked at it and laughed. That child's handwriting is getting prettier and prettier. Isn't it starting to look like someone's else? Who's that? Xue Zhenyang blew on his tea leaves and took a copy of edition of Ancient Barrier Scroll from the desk book. He then said, take a look at Yu Heng's book and see if you can spot the similarities. Madame Wang held the scroll, flipped through it and said with a surprised, oh, it really does starting to look like that. When he first came to Shisheng Peak and started to study under Yu Heng, Yu Hong told him to read a book on his own first. But he barely knew any of the characters. So then, Yu Heng spent some time teaching him starting from his name, then the simple characters and then the more complex ones. Xue Zhenyang shook his head, at that time, he wasn't very meticulous in his studies and was only serious on things he has preference like drawing talismans. Now, he seemed to doing be well and writing decent letters. Madame Wang laughed, I think traveling to see the world has been wonderful for him. It seemed he's really calmed down a lot while he's out there. Xue Zhenyang also laughed and said, I wonder what he will look like after five years of travel. How old would he be then? 22. Ugh. Xue Zhenyang sighed, seemingly with some emotion, I thought Yu Heng would be able to take care of them until they were 20 but alas, heavens had their own plans. Heavens had their own plans, that's what Mo Ran thinks so, too. His travels had taken him from the misty rains of Jiangnan to the south of the Yangtze River to the Saibai Grand Pass to the north. He had sat by the Tulao River and drunk rice wine in the summer. In the winter, he had listened to a Chiang flute huddled by the campfire. In his previous lifetime, after he had become emperor, everything under the heavens had been his but he had never taken the time to traverse all the waters and mountains to see lanterns and the fishing boats in the east or the underwater aqueducts in the west. He never bothered to look at the dark feet of the footmen carrying load-laden poles across the cobblestone road, the flesh cracked and the solace hard as iron. 
he never stopped to listen to the young trainees of an opera troupe, their voice pitched like rippling silk, rising into the sky. The scene of abundant blooming flowers amidst a ruined decrepit wall. He was no longer the taxi in June. He would no longer be taxi in June in this lifetime. He is. Big brother, it was the crisp voice of a child in the street, big brother, can you save this little bird? It has a broken wing and I, I don't know what to do. Young master, this was the hoarse voice of the old chief village of Shizhu village, thank you, thank you so much. If you hadn't taken care of the demon, our village would be full of widows and orphans by now. We might even have had to leave our hometown if it weren't for you. I will never forget your kindness. Kind master. It was the trembling voice of a beggar he had met on the road. Kind master, we have not had a full meal for many days, please have mercy. Moran closed his eyes. Then opened them again. Because someone called him. Grand Master Mo. He was somewhat stung by being addressed this way. He raised his head and looked at the sun-tanned man who had called out to him and said somewhat helplessly, I am not a Grand Master, my shi is. Don't call me that again. The man scratched his head nervously and said, I'm sorry, everyone in the village calls you that. I know you don't like it, but I can't change it. Moran has been staying in a village at the edge of lower cultivation world for the past few days. A few miles away from the village stood a towering snow-capped mountain where snow ghosts often came down to haunt the villagers. These were lesser demons with low spiritual energy and could be taken care by a night wanderer. Unfortunately, the village was too remote that they haven't even heard of the night wanderers created by Chu Wanning. So, Moran had no choice but to follow the manuals that his Shizun left behind and try to create one for this village. After many failures, he finally produced his first working one. The night wanderer that he made was nowhere near as beautiful or as nimble as his Shizun's but the wooden golem worked as it was supposed to. This novelty made the poor villagers extremely happy that they started to call him Grand Master Mo, much to Mo Ran's embarrassment. But more embarrassment is yet to come. One evening when the setting sun stained half the sky red, he was walking along a bustling path by an apricot grove. He was returning from his studies at the Taishan Academy, when someone suddenly shouted. Grand Master Chu. When he heard this name, Mo Ran didn't even have time to think before he immediately turned back, and then he laughed at himself. There were so many cultivators in the world with the surname Chu, and now he was listening to the wind and thinking that it was his Shizun who had woken up early. How could that be possible? He shook his head and smiled. He was about turn around when he heard another shout, Grand Master Chu. Mo Ran was holding a pile of scrolls as he scanned through the crowd. Suddenly, he saw someone waving at him, but they were too far away. He could not see that person's face clearly and could only roughly see his clothes. He was a young man wearing a blue cultivator's garb, with a bow on his back and a wolfhound by his side. The person quickly approached, but when Mo Ran and him could make out each other's features, they both froze in unison. You are. Mo Ran. He was the first to react. Holding the scrolls in his hands, he. Simply nodded his head. He looked curiously at the young man's face for a moment, I didn't expect to meet young master Nangong here. What a. Coincidence. It turned out that the person who called him Grand Master Chu was the son of the Rufeng sex leader, Nangong Si. This young man had died too early in his previous life so Mo Ran had never met him before. However, Chu Wanning was once a guest elder of the Rufeng sect, so Nangong Si must be familiar with him. Mo Ran looked him up and down, his gaze resting for a moment on the quiver in Nangong Si's hand. 
it was a very old quiver made of cloth embroidered with camellia patterns. It was so worn that the colors of the petals were faintly yellowed as if even embroidered flower could not last forever and would also withered. Nangong Si was neat and well dressed except for the old quiver which was so worn that the stitching of its patches could be clearly seen. Mo Ran could tell this this quiver must be precious to him but then, who in this world did not have a few things that were precious to them? No one was heartless no matter how they seemed, nothing is that simple. Nangong Si frowned and said, Mo Ran. I remembered. Your Grand Master Chu's disciple, Dot. Hmm. That being the case, Nangong Si's attitude was a little better and he said, My bad, I was a bit far away. Looking at your figure and dress from a distance, I thought it was the Grand Master Chu who had left seclusion early without my knowledge. Mo Ran took his gaze away from the quiver and tactfully did not ask too many questions. He only replied calmly, hearing you call out like that, I also thought that Chi Zun has left seclusion ahead of time without me knowing. Nangong Si chuckled. Perhaps because he was born a noble that even when he was laughing, there was still a bit of arrogance in his handsome face. Moreover, his arrogance was different from Xue Meng's. Xue Meng was arrogant because he was confident in his ability and talent while Nangong Si's was more of an aggressive kind of arrogance. However, since he was living a life of luxury, this aggressiveness was not frightening and only make him seem wild and fiery. Mo Ran could t help but think to himself that Nangong Si was really like a free-spirited stallion. He was lost in thought when he heard Nangong Si said, I was extremely saddened when Grand Master Chu was tragically killed during the Heavenly Rift incident. It was really fortunate that he could be revived through a Grand Master's guidance. When he wakes up, I will definitely pay him a visit at Chi Sheng Peak. Then we will be looking forward to the young master's visit. Nangong Si waved his hand and suddenly noticed the scrolls on Mo Ran's hand and wondered, What is Brother Mo doing here? Studying. Nangong Si originally thought that when he said studying, he was talking about studying some obscure and complicated scrolls. But upon closer inspection, he realized that they were all just basic classics such as the unrestrained, Book of Rites and the likes. He was stunned at first and then said, These. These are all basic scriptures, I memorized them all when I was a child, what is the use of studying them? Mo Ran gaze was open and said with no shame, When I was young, I couldn't even write my own name. Ahem, Nangong Si said with some awkwardness, Did you sign up in an academy? Hmm. Some time back, I was collecting spiritual stone for cultivation on Mount Tai when I saw that the Tai Shan Academy were holding classes. Since I have some free time, I had been attending the lectures. Nangong Si nodded his head and seeing that it was getting late, he said, Has Brother Mo had dinner yet? Since Brother Mo is a disciple of Grand Master Chu and is currently in the territory of Rufeng sect, it is only natural that I should show my hospitality. My companion is waiting for me at a restaurant nearby, would you like to join us? Mo Ran thought about it and decided that since he had nothing else today anyway and so he said, I'd be happy to. We're going to Wu Pavilion, one of the most famous restaurants in Linyi area. They make the best fatty sausages. Have you heard of them? Nangong Si asked as he led Mo Ran. How could I not know of the place? Mo Ran laughed. It's one of the best restaurants in upper cultivation world. Young Master Si, you sure know how to pick a place. I didn't pick the place. Oh, you didn't. Nangong Si said, my companion picked it out. As someone who had lived a full lifetime, Mo Ran was somewhat aware of the complicated matters in Rufeng sect. He was surprised but kept his mouth shut and only thought to himself, Is Ye Wangzi here, too? 
He followed Nangong Si upstairs to the restaurant. He lifted the beaded curtain of the private dining room to step inside and nearly choked when he saw who was the person waiting. It was Song Kaiyutong dressed in a light silk who was by the window, gazing at the peach blossoms outside. She turned around at the sound of their voices, the golden adornments that dangled by her temples made her skin look fairer and her lips redder. She looked really pretty. Mo Rans paused mid-step into the room, subconsciously pulling back. He wondered if it was too late to tell Nangong Si that he didn't like Shandong cuisine, especially fatty sausages. End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shizun Chapter 122 Shizun's Reflection Come brother Mo, let me introduce you. This is a shimmy from my sect, Song Kaiyutong. In the end, he sat down and let Nangong Si introduce him at the dining table. As if there is a need for Nangong Si to tell him anything about Song Kaiyutong when he even knew exactly where she had a mole on her back and a birthmark on the base of her leg. However, his face remained impassive as he nodded towards her with much restraint, Miss Song. This is Grand Master Chu's direct disciple, Mo Weiyo of Shi Sheng Peak. You should have met him from the incident at Kaidi Town but there were a lot of people at that time, so you probably don't remember. Song Kuitong smiled gently, stood up and bowed slightly as she said. Song Kaiyutong is pleased to meet young Master Mo. Mo Ran didn't get up. He gazed at her with an unfathomable look for a long time before he finally said, Same here. The thing is, Mo Ran was deeply disgusted by this wife in his previous life and this disgust did not just emerge after his rebirth. It was something that was deeply rooted in his bones, completely indelible. After his rebirth, the few encounters he had with her was from a distance and so despite of how much he loathed her, it was not as unbearable as it was now. She was a fragile and delicate woman, always soft-spoken. She is like an unripe fruit on a tree in early autumn, hidden behind lush foliage, not as fragrant as the flowers with its understated color but was very pleasing. The slender yet plump body was filled with endless tenderness and gentleness, as if one could taste the sweet and sour taste of its juice with just a small nibble. Only after biting into it will one find inside a rotting, smelly worm lying dead inside the core, its body filled with pus and molds. It is true that the evils that Song Kuitong has done in the previous life was nothing compared to what he did. She only betrayed the Rufeng sect in order to save her life. When Mo Ran massacred the city under Ye Wangzi's protection, she sacrificed Ye Wangzi in order to save her life. So, while Lin Yi was being littered with corpses, she was enjoying the rewards of gold and silver, beautifying herself to carefully serve her new master. After the massacre, she maligned Ye Wangzi by weeping in front of the corpse which could never speak for itself to show her sincerity. She cried bitterly, declaring that Ye Wangzi had treated her cruelly, how she had been tormented every day and that if Mo Ran did not come, she would have to spend the rest of her life working as an ill-treated slave for Ye Wangzi. What's else? Mo Ran thought in silence. What else had Song Kuitong done? Nangong Si was an impatient man. When a few dishes were delayed in being served, he went to urge the restaurant to hurry up. Thus, only the former husband and wife were left in the dining room. Young Master Mo, let me give you a toast. She poured wine for him, half of her forearm sticking out of her sleeve, a bit of bright red cinnabar on her wrist. For some strange reason, Mo Ran raised his hand and grabbed her wrist. She gave a soft yelp and raised her delicate dew laden eyes, looking at him in fear and confusion, Young Master Mo, what are you doing? Mo Ran stared at her face for a moment then his gaze dropping to rest on the delicate fingers of her fair hands. What a nice pair of hands! Mo Ran said after a long pause with a solemn and distant expression. Does Miss Song know how to play chess? Eh, a little bit. Hands as nice as this must be good in playing chess, he said coldly. From outside came the sound of Nangong Si's footsteps as well as the barking of his tamed wolfhound. Excuse me. 
Mo Ran let go of Song Kaiyutong's thin wrist, then took a handkerchief and carefully wiped his fingers clean. Outside, the setting sun casts a brilliant color upon the dusky sky while inside a sumptuous banquet is being held on a spring night. Mo Ran looked as normal as if nothing had happened. Song Kaiyutong was despised for no apparent reason, but she had always been able to endure it. She even got up to pour Mo Ran a drink. He didn't want to drink the wine she poured so he never touched the cup for the remainder of the meal. Nangong Si spoke, Brother Mo, it won't be long before the Lingshan Mountain Conference. You are Grand Master Chu's disciple, so you can't embarrass him. Are you ready? I'm not going. You can't be serious. I am. Mo Ran said with a laugh. It's enough for my cousin to go. All the sects in the world are rushing to Lingshan Mountain and am not really fond of such large gatherings. Nangong Si didn't seem convinced at all, his brown eyes narrowed like a hawk's. But Mo Ran's eyes looked at him openly and without reservation. The eagle stared at the rocks for a while and found that they were really just rocks, hiding no cunning rabbits or slippery snakes. He leaned back in his chair, twirled his chopsticks and suddenly grinned, interesting. Then I won't see you at the Lingshan Mountain Conference. That's right. Nangong Si raised his hand to his forehead and snorted, Grand Master Chu's disciples are so good that they don't even bother to attend such a prestigious event. Mo Ran thought, how can I explain this? It's not as if he could tell Nangong Si that he was a 30-something ghost that had come back to life or how could Taxi and June played around with a bunch of children who were just starting out while a bunch of sect leaders which he had either killed or beaten up in his previous life sat on the stage grading his performance with their little scorecards. It's ridiculous. Coughing, he said, it's not that I think I am too good for the competition but it's more like I'm not proficient in orthodox cultivation techniques. I'm afraid that if I go with my less than solid foundation, I'll disgrace my Shizun. Young Master Nangong has such great skill and well suited for this competition. Please do not misunderstand. A naive young bird like Shui Meng would have been delighted to hear this, thinking that Mo Ran had got it right, but Nangong Si was from Rufeng sect which has a complex set of factions and complicated internal politics. In addition, he had lost his mother since he was a child. His life could never had been simple. So, when he heard Mo Ran's compliments, he just laughed and did not let it go to his head. He took a few gulps of wine, the jut of his throat throbbed then wiped his mouth with his sleeve and said, Since young master Mo is not competing, why don't you guess who will be the winner of this tournament from a spectator's point of view? Mo Ran thought to himself, You're damn right you're asking the correct person. Who else know better than him? Except for the fake Gushin, who may also be a reborn person, he, Mo Weiyu, is the only person in the world who knew the outcome of the Lingshan Mountain competition that year. And the winner was Nangong Si. Suddenly, the beaded curtain of the private dining room was pushed aside with a swish. In the flickering halo of light, a face half shrouded in shadow showed. Before the two men in the room could react, Song Kaiyutong stood up abruptly as if she had been pricked by a needle. Her face was full of pitiful looking panic as she lowered her head in apology, young. Young master yet. The newcomer stood tall and straight. He wore a black robe trimmed with dark gold with bracers around his wrist, highlighting his lean and lithe figure. Three parts elegant and seven parts handsome, who else could it be other than Ye Wangzi? I didn't call you. Ye Wangzi did not even look at her, and fully pushed aside the pearl curtain, walking into the room. His gaze was still fixed on the same person, looking cold but shining with some other fine stream of light, Nangong Si, I was calling you. Raise your head if you can hear me. Instead of looking up, Nangong Si said to Song Kaiyutong, What are you doing standing up for? Sit down. No, young master Nangong. My status is low. I think it's better for me. To stand. Nangong Si suddenly erupted into rage and shouted, Sit, down. Song Kaiyutong shrank back, supporting herself on the table as she hesitated. Ye Wangzi, 
not wanting to be so standoffish, said coldly, you listen to him. Many thanks, Master Ye. Ye Wangzi no longer paid attention to Song Kaiyutong and instead said. Nangongsi, how much longer are you going to cause trouble? The sect. Leader was furious. Get up and come back with me. It's for the best. I'll just pretend he's crazy and he can pretend that I'm dead. It's no use to talk me into going back. Unless he retracts his order. I will not step back even half a step into the Rufeng sect. Nangong Si paused for a moment then said, Young. Master. Yet. Yeah. Please go back. Yu Ye Wangzi clenched his fist, his entire body trembling slightly as Mo Ran watched from the side. He felt that he would kick over the entire banquet table and pull Nangong Si away at any moment, but Ye Wangzi was a gentleman after all and he was able to suppress his monstrous rage. Nangong Si. He was silent for a few moments, and then he spoke. His. Voice was hoarse, and it carried with it a sense of exhaustion that went against his straight face. Do you really have to go this far? So what if I do? Ye Wangzi closed his eyes, let out a sigh before slowly opening his eyes again. He was standing by the table when he finally turned his head to look at Mo Ran. Mo Ran tactfully stood up, bowed to Ye Wangzi, and said, Just now, Remembered that I had an appointment to go to a store for clothes tonight. I am already late and making the shopkeeper wait, I will take my leave first. Ye Wangzi nodded at him, many thanks, young master Mo. No need to thank me, just talk properly. Mo Ran walked past Ye Wangzi, and when he crossed his shoulders with him, he glanced at him intentionally. Only when he got closer did he realize that although Ye Wangzi's still poise was sturdy as a pine tree, he had a slight redness at the end of his eyes, as if he had just cried before he arrived. Mo Ran suddenly felt that Ye Wangzi's forbearance was somewhat similar to that of Chu Wanning. For a moment, he felt an impulse and could not help but turn back to Nangong Si and said, Young Master Nangong, although I don't know what's going on between you and Young Master Ye, I feel that he has treated you very well. If you want to, then talk it out with him. Don't try to keep your words hidden. However, Nangong Si was not grateful. In his anger, he said coldly, regardless of his affinity, it's none of your business. This short-lived kid. Mo Ran walked away. He hadn't even reached the bottom of the stairs when he heard furious shoutings of Nangong Si. The wolf-like young man using his sharp teeth to tear into Ye Wangzi's soul, questioning him. Ye Wangzi, what have you put into my father's head to make him see you as more important than me? Go back with you. All my life, when have I ever been allowed my own choices? Tell me Ye Wangzi, just what exactly do you all take me for? Then came the sound of table falling over with a clang, chairs being toppled over and of plates and cups falling to the ground. All the maidservants in the corridors were frightened by the noise and some guests poked their heads out of their own dining rooms. What's going on? Ayo, who has such a bad temper? I hope they don don't destroy the restaurant. Mo Ran pursed his lips and could help but glanced back at the end of the corridor. He heard Ye Wangzi's voice, dried and withered like a lifeless leaf in autumn. Nangong Si, if my presence is what making you unhappy at home. Then I will leave, I will never appear before you again. Just go back. Ye Wangzi said, please. If he hadn't heard it with his own ears, he would never have believed that. Someone as upright as Ye Wangzi would say such a weak word as please. In his mind, Ye Wangzi was an immovable person, an invincible force on the battlefield. For Mo Ran, it was far easier to imagine him bleeding than crying as he would die rather than beg. But today, in this restaurant, in front of Song Kaiyutong, he pleaded to someone. Mo Ran closed his eyes. In the course of one's life, how many things does one never find out? Nobody showed themselves naked in front of other people. People wear clothes to hide their bodies and used words and expressions to hide their emotions. 
everyone wrapped themselves up tightly with only their necks sticking out like flowering branch peeking out, offering the world a painted face with unambiguous expressions, each playing their own role for life is but a theater performance, the roles definite and clear-cut, Shen, Dan, Jing, Zhou. Note, roles in Peking Opera, Shen, main male role, Dan, female role, Jing, painted face, male role, Zhou, clown role, Huayden, subset of female role, Wushan, martial artist, subset of Shen role. If someone had always played the Shen role, how could they simply accept a change of costume and repaint their face to play the Dan role instead? At the end of night, when the symbols ceased and the lutes were silent, when everyone washed their faces off and the greasy water carried away the made-up faces they wore in the day, revealing the unfamiliar features underneath them. It would turn out that the Huayden was actually a gallant young man, while the Wushan has a pair of tender, loving eyes. When Mo Ran returned to his temporary home, he thought to himself, he has lived for two lifetimes but just how much did he understand others? How much did he understand himself? A single Chu Wanning is enough to make his heart grow and then die and to be born again. Chu Wanning And then recalled that today Nangong Si had mistaken him for Chu Wanning, which was a bit amusing, but how could he make such mistake? However, when he was washing his face and rinsing his mouth, he suddenly discovered that the person in the bronze mirror was wearing a simple white cultivator robe and a high ponytail. The ponytail was tied randomly in the morning, and the cultivator's robe was because he found some days ago that he had outgrown the robes that he brought with him. So, he went to one shop to pick new clothes and found this beautiful white robe. He did not bother think too much why he found the white robes beautiful. Instead, he just bought the robes and donned them in his body right away. Looking in the mirror, it suddenly dawned on him. It turns out that this white robe is so similar to the one Chu Wanning used to wear. The bronze mirror was dull yellow, as if it was a dream in his previous life. Mo Ran looked at the person in the mirror and felt like he was looking at a phantom of Chu Wanning, a muted illusionary dream version of the man. The water that he had washed his face with had not yet dried and was dripping along the gradually maturing lines of his jaw and down to his chin. He stood in front of the mirror and more or less understood that, just as his night wanderer was clumsily imitating the night wanderer created by Chu Wanning, he himself was clumsily imitating his Shi Zun. Mo Ran seemed to have been subconsciously searching for Chu Wanning in the world. When he couldn't find him, he slowly became him. Time has gone by. I'm overwhelmed by remorse, or maybe something else. I couldn't see you, but I always thought about what you would do if you were in a situation like this, what would make you smile and what would annoy you. I thought about you before doing anything and hoped that I made you proud in the things that I did. I thought, if you were there and I did this, would you nod your head and would you be willing to compliment me a little bit and say I did the right thing? Every day I thought about this until it buried in the marrow of my bones and it became a habit. So then, ah, even I didn't realize it. It turns out that as time goes by, I have already lived the way I thought you would. End chapter